Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Abiola Olushegu. I'm a naturopathic consultant in MB Holistic Care. I am here this evening again to discuss with us on the title Amenorrhea and Dysmenorrhea. Amenorrhea is what we know as the absence of menstruation. Amenorrhea is the monthly menstrual flow, that's what we call menstruation, the, the vaginal bleeding that occurs as part of a woman's monthly cycle, that is menstruation. So when a woman is suffering from amenorrhea, that means she's not menstruating, it is the absence of menstruation. And when a woman who has had menstrual circles now misses the circle like three periods in a row, she's considered to have a secondary amenorrhea. Likewise, when a girl reaches 16 years old and have not begun menstruating, she may be said to have a primary amenorrhea. Amenorrhea, on the other hand, is menstrual cramps. That's painful menstruation that pains in the lower abdomen that is what we call dysmenorrhea and many women experience menstrual cramps just before and during their menstrual periods but for some women the discomfort is merely annoying it is not as much as that but for others menstrual cramps can be severe it can be severe enough to interfere with their everyday activities for a few days every month and menstrual cramps may be caused by identifiable problems such as endometriosis, uterine fibroids, or dietary lifestyle. Treating any underlying cause is the key to reducing the pain. Menstrual cramps that are not caused by tend to lessen with age and they often improve once a woman has given birth. So, we move now to the causes of amenorrhea. Amenorrhea can occur for a variety of reasons. Some are normal during the course of a woman's life, while others may be a side effect of medication or a sign of a medical problem. During the normal or natural cause of amenorrhea, the woman can, that can cease to see it during pregnancy, for example. The woman can cease to see it during breastfeeding and during menopause. But there is nothing to be worried about as regards all these that I've mentioned. That is the pregnancy, breastfeeding, and menopause. When, the, when a woman does not menstruate at that time, there is nothing to be worried about. It's not a problem. But there are other causes that requires treatment intervention when a woman is not menstruating. And one of the causes is contraceptives. When a woman is taking birth control pills, you know, some women, when they take it, they, their, their menstruation tends to cease. And even after stopping oral contraceptives, it may take some time before regular ovulation and, and menstruation return. Contraceptives that are injected or implanted also may cause amenorrhea. And some types of intrauterine devices that thwart endocrine system activities. These um, pills prevent the body from making from it pre prevents the body from making hormones that are involved in ovulation and menstruation. And so it can take some time for for your body to return to the normal production and this almost it, it takes it takes times for the body to 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 return to normal production of the hormones and when you stop taking those um pills you know it can take time because these pills introduce different hormones into your system that is why i don't advise contraceptive uh, pills. And another thing that can cause amenorrhea is 
a lifestyle cause, which is stress. Stress. There is mental stress. There is emotional stress. Mental stress can, can temporarily alter the functioning of your hypothalamus. That's the area of your brain that controls the hormones that regulate your menstrual cycle. So ovulation and menstruation may stop. Though it may take time after a while. When, when you stop the stress, it might continue again, but it might just take a while. And emotional or physical stress may also cause amenorrhea for as long as the stress remains. So that is why you need to you need to watch your stress. You need to you need to to know how to put up with stress. And another one, another lifestyle factor that causes amenorrhea is poor dietary lifestyles. Poor dietary lifestyle. You know, intake of foods that contains colorings, that contains preservatives and and additives in excess all these affect the endocrine system and they cause amenorrhea one thing that is important in cause of amenorrhea before treating the patient that is what we do in mb holistic care we identify the cause of the amenorrhea first before doing the treatment so you know that is why we ask questions about the woman's home, her family affairs, husband's attitude towards her, because you know mental or emotional stress also sees menstrual flow, and at times it could be due to genetic issue. Then some people who are on their way too can have amenorrhea issue, and those who engage in rigorous exercise because. When you engage in rigorous exercise, the body, the body believes that it is in a state of starvation. So that is why it affects those that, that do that does a rigorous exercise. And you know, those that are underweight produce reduced amount of estrogen. That is why it affects them. And another lifestyle factors that, that can cause amenorrhea is structural problem. Problem with the sexual organs themselves also cause amenorrhea, like uterine scarring, like Asherman syndrome. This is a condition in which scar tissue builds up in the lining of the uterus, and it can sometimes occur after a dilation and um, curettage, that is DNC, or cesarean section, or treatment of uterine fib fibroids. That is when women develop this Asherman syndrome. And uterine scarring prevents the normal buildup and, and shedding of the uterine lining. Your scar, scar tissue can actually cause cyclic pelvic pain from menstrual blood getting trapped in the uterus. And it can also cause recurrent pregnancy loss or even inability to conceive at all. And sometimes problems arise during fetal development that lead to a girl being born without some some part of our reproductive system such as our uterus our cervix or vagina so that one is lack of reproductive organs so because our reproductive or uh, reproductive system didn't develop normally she won't have menstrual cycles so that is part of the of the lifestyle factors that causes amenorrhea another one is structural abnormality of the vagina an obstruction of the vagina may prevent visible menstrual bleeding the membrane or what may may be present in the vagina that blocks the outflow so this one is another 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 lifestyle factor that causes amenorrhea then complications of other diseases like fibroids cyst diabetes cancer osteoporosis, infections, and toxins build up can also cause amenorrhea. And another one is individual hormonal imbalances. This is another common cause of amenorrhea. Though other medications like antipsychotics, cancer chemotherapy, antidepressants, blood pressure drugs, allergy medications, all these can also cause amenorrhea. But Hormonal imbalance problems can cause amenorrhea, like PCOS, that's polycystic ovarian syndrome. 
That PCOS causes relatively high, high and sustained levels of hormones rather than the fluctuating levels in the normal menstrual cycle. Because estrogen will be elevated, luteinizing hormone will be hypersecreted, follicle stimulating hormone will be reduced. You know, all this leads to amenorrhea. And another, another one, another type of hormonal imbalance is thyroid mal malfunction. That is an overactive thyroid gland. That is hyperthyroidism or underactive thyroid gland. That is hypothyroidism. All this can cause menstrual irregularities, including amenorrhea. Then another one is pituitary tumor. That is a, a, a non-cancerous, that is benign tumor in your pituitary gland. That can interfere with the hormonal regulation of menstruation. Pituitary gland, that is a small pea-sized gland that plays a major role in regulating vital body functions and general well-being. So, and we call it the master gland because it controls the activity of most of most other other hormone secreting glands. So when, when there is a tumor in the pituitary gland, it causes amenorrhea. Then another one is premature menopause. That is another, another hormonal imbalance issue that can cause amenorrhea. Menopause usually, it usually begins around age 50. But for some women, the ovarian supply of eggs diminishes at age 40. And menstruation stops, all due to low level of hormones responsible like progesterone, estrogen. So it, it causes low levels of these hormones. And this leads to amenorrhea. Now we move on to the causes of dysmenorrhea. You know, during, during your menstrual period, your, your uterus contracts to help expel its lining. And hormone-like substance, that is, we call them prostaglandin, an inflammation trigger. So they, they trigger the uterine muscle contractions. This causes the pains. And high levels of prostate associated with more severe menstrual cramps. You know, we, 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 actually, we actually talked about the hormonal imbalances issue. This also affects, it also causes dysmenorrhea. And another, 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 another hormone, another, um, another severe conditions may, may, may narrow the blood vessels feeding the uterus. And the resulting pain can be compared to the chest pain that occurs when, when blocked blood vessels starve portions of the heart or food. So, other causes of um, dysmenorrhea, that's the, the, the menstrual cramps, other causes include endometriosis. Endometriosis, in this, in this painful condition, the tissue that lines your uterus becomes implanted outside the uterus most commonly in your fallopian tubes, ovaries, or, or the tissue lining your pelvis. This is a very painful co uh, condition. We have, we have once discussed on endometriosis. And another, another, another cause of dysmenorrhea is uterine fibroids. They are, these, these are the non-cancerous growths in the wall of the uterus, and they may be the cause of the pain, because fibroids might be one, it might be multiple, and this may be the cause of the menstrual cramps. Then another one is adenomyosis. Adenomyosis. In this condition, the tissue that lines your uterus begins to grow into the muscular walls of the uterus. When endometrial tissue exists within and grows into the uterine wall, that is what we call Then another one is PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. This, this infection of the female reproductive organ is usually caused by sexually transmitted bacteria. And when it is present in a woman, it causes dysmenorrhea. Then another, another one we'll discuss is cervical stenosis. In some women, the opening of the cervix may be so small that it impedes menstrual flow. And this causes a painful increase of pressure within the uterus. So these we have all these we have mentioned are the causes of dysmenorrhea. Then there are some there are some risk factors that are attached to 
amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. You may be at great risk of menstrual cramps if you are younger than age 30. And if you, if you start puberty early at age 11 or younger, you are at, you are at risk of dysmenorrhea. Then if you have every bleeding during periods, we call that dysmenorrhagia. You are, you are at risk of dysmenorrhea. Then if you have irregular menstrual bleeding, that's metrorrhagia. Then if you have never given birth, you are at high risk. And if you have a family history of dysmenorrhea, you are also at high risk of dysmenorrhea. And also, if you are a smoker, you are at high risk. But one thing I've always said, and I'll continue to say, is that it is important to identify the cause of amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea before treating a patient. And it is, it is important to conduct examinations on the patient to know the root cause of the problem before treatment. There are some, there are some diagnoses we conduct, like pregnancy tests. Pregnancy, you know, this will probably be the, the first thing, the first test you think of when once the woman is in, a, in reproductive age to rule out or confirm a possible pregnancy. And there is another one, thyroid function test. That is measuring the amount of thyroid stimulating hormone in your blood. And, you know, that can determine if you're working properly or not functioning well because this can be a cause. Then there is another one that is an ovary function test. This is measuring the amount of follicle stimulating hormone in your blood. You know, this can, this can actually determine if your ovaries are working properly or not, not working very well because this also leads to amenorrhea. And there is another one that is a um, prolactin test. Because low levels of the hormone prolactin may be a sign of a pituitary gland tumor. Then there is another one we conduct, male hormone test. If the lady or the woman experiencing amenorrhea has increased facial hair and a lowered voice, we may want to check the level of testosterone. And if it is high, it can cause amenorrhea. So all the above laboratory investigations are very, very important to know the root cause of amenorrhea. And other important laboratory investigations that we also recommend that they are imaging tests, but though it depends on the symptoms of the person, we, we, have, we actually recommend ultrasound because this test, this test uses sound of internal organs. And if a woman has never had a period, we may suggest an ultrasound test to check for any abnormalities in our reproductive organs. There is a computerized tomography, CT, CT scans. CT scan combine many X-ray images taken from from different directions to create cross-sectional views of internal structures. A CT scan can it can indicate whether the uterus look normal. And there is a one, another one MRI that's magnetic resonance imaging. MRI uses radio waves with a strong magnetic field to produce exceptionally detailed images of soft tissues within the body. So you may order an, an check for a pituitary tumor, but it all depends on the symptoms of the person. This, all these diagnoses I've mentioned are, are, are both for amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. Though their, their symptoms varies. However, both, both usually have similar causes. So now I want to discuss the management of amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. Amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea, as we know, we have said that amenorrhea is the absence of menstruation, while dysmenorrhea is menstrual cramps. So, and when we want to manage amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea, at times, we don't need to give medicine to someone to cure it. We advise to abstain from certain lifestyles like diet, smoking, reducing stress, getting enough sleep, and some reasonable exercises which can help reverse some health problems. You know, emotional problems, as we have said earlier, can be a cause of amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. Financial issues, loss of job, 
too much pressure at the place of work, love affairs, all this can interfere with the endocrine system and they can cause several health problems like amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. So we need to take our time and find out the root cause of the problem before the treatment. And nutritionally, nutritionally, a woman should avoid all processed foods and stick to raw organic diets. No soft drinks, no noodles, no maggi, no pizza, no shawarma. All this should be stopped. The woman should stop smoking too if she's a type that smokes. And if she's a type that takes alcohol, she should stop because excess alcohol, taking alcohol can cause amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. So how to manage it there there, there, there are some there are some things that are, are, are foreign that can actually help greatly in managing amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea like vitex for example vitex is a plant that helps normalize pituitary gland so taking a tablespoon in tea form will help with amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea and there is another one we call black cohosh that uh, they also call it black snake root is another great foreign plant when you mix it with liquor rice, both in equal quantity, and taking a teaspoonful twice daily we improve estrogen progesterone levels. It will improve them greatly. Then taking vitamin D, iodine, vitamin B6, all this we also help with amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. Then another one is a uh, kelp, bladder work, and oxtail. These are also wonderful plants that they can that we can use for thyroid glands, thyroid glands problem. So they should be used in tea form, a teaspoonful. Each of them at two hours interval in a day is okay. Well, and also in our local indigenous medicine, we have several preparations for amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea which we also use to treat our patients in MB holistic care. So there is another one that is maca root. It's a foreign plant, but the local one is baka. The Yoruba call it baka. We have it locally too. If you cannot get the maca root, because the maca root is a foreign plant. So if you can get the local one, which, which Yoruba call baka, that one is also okay. Dry it, peel, cut into pieces and dry then then you blend it to powder, you take half teaspoon daily. But I have told us that it is better to identify the cause before treatment. Consult a healthcare professional. The more information you can give, the better. So you consult, know the root cause of your amenorrhea or dysmenorrhea before treatment. And additionally, you know, changing your diet, I've said it before, changing your diet exercising and adopting a regular sleep pattern can help with amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. So if you have no period or you have irregular period, you should find out why. Go for diagnosis. Don't say there is no problem. This is not really affecting me. Don't put up with painful periods. It is better to go for diagnosis. So this is where we'll end our lecture for today. You can also join us on Monday, when we'll be discussing about anemia, also live on face, Facebook. So you can help us like and share this video so that other women that are unable to join this lecture can also benefit from it. So that when they are feeling menstrual cramps or when they have no menstruation, they can know what causes it and can also know how to manage their amenorrhea or dysmenorrhea then please also subscribe on our youtube channel youtube channel the link is pasted on this lecture and if you have any question concerning amenorrhea or dysmenorrhea you can drop it in the comment box we will reply as soon as possible and if you would like to speak with a doctor or you want to visit our clinic you can call you can speak with a doctor on 081 zero four six zero seven one three zero and you can also follow us on all our social media platforms on twitter is at care mb on instagram is mb holistic care on the mb holistic conduct score care and 
uh, if you want to visit our clinic, our clinic is situated at number 51, Abiodun Shudia Street, Meru Agbadoja in Lagos. And our, you can also visit our website, www.mbholistichealthcare.com.ng. And you can reach us on our email address, info at mbholistichealthcare.com.ng or mbholistichcare2020 at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. See you on Monday. My name once again is Dr. Abiola Olushegun. I'm a naturopathic consultant. Thank you.